Hey gang, uh, we're back again. It's been a couple of weeks here uh, locally, um, but uh, you know, for you guys, it's just been a week. Um, we're gonna dig back into into the, the chassis here. I want to really get this thing to be a roller. This week, we're gonna work on the rear brakes. Um, so it's not just the rear brakes. Unfortunately, the uh, axle stubs need some work. So we're gonna rebuild those and try to get the rear brakes installed at the same time as all part of this video. Part of the challenge we have is with these rear stub axles. Um, I already had them partially apart. Um, I took the, the, the seal cap off, but they're tight and it really sounds like they're a little grindy. Now I did have the, the whole body uh, blasted as you probably remember. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's some material in there. So we're gonna actually take and we're gonna blast this apart, uh, take it all down, tear it all down. And I've got a bunch of replacement parts up here in, in there. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mind those replacement parts. Um, and it's nice, it's actually a nice day. Uh, I've got some thunderstorms pushing through the area, but it's finally springtime. Uh, so the world's waking up so I can work with the garage door open instead of having the propane heater in here. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get working on getting this apart. So the key here is uh, we've got the, the stub axle itself. Um, we've got a seal plate cover here. Uh, just back this guy off. I've, I've taken most of the 13 millimeter bolts off of it already, so they're just finger tight. We're gonna get this guy out of the way. Um, and we're going to use the, the axle itself to, to get, uh, we're gonna kind of pound on it a little bit with a, non-marking hammer. I don't want to uh, mess up the threads or anything on there. One of the tools that I like to use is the the axle nut itself. Um, so we have a series of seals and the bearings and this uh, will back right out of the housing here. Just need to give it a, a couple little taps. Let's get our, our hammer here. There. And it's out. Um, while you're in here, there are a few things to look at, see if you have in your rebuild kit. Uh, they sell decent rebuild kits that come out with uh, pretty standard parts. But some of the items to look at in here, you have obviously your bearing here in the middle. Your bearing is right here uh, for your outer bearing. And you can, and you can roll it and I can feel it catches a little bit, but there's also this O-ring, this dust seal O-ring. Um, it goes right behind your bearing cap. Um, you wanna make sure that bearing cap is nice and clean, so make sure you get in there really well, clean that up and before you put everything back together. Uh, this is a, a home for dirt. Dirt and bearings are not friends. So now that we have that out, uh, we're gonna get the seals pulled out of the front and back and we will get the, the bearings out so there's a, a front bearing in here uh, and then there's a uh, a collar that's actually inside here th that the uh, stub axle rides on as well it's kind of a spacer uh, we'll get all that replaced um, i do have uh, a replacement bearing and then a replacement seal kit uh, a decent seal kit and it comes with uh, new o-ring seals for the outside here it comes with a new seal that goes on the bearing keep uh bearing cap as well as uh they look like cardboard or, or paper seals that go right here um uh, underneath the seal cap and so some of uh, various other stuff so let's get into it now i switched our angle a little bit now we're looking at the back um, so we have this seal in here. We need to get the seal out. That needs to be replaced. So I'm gonna use a seal puller. Here it goes. Pop it loose, see? There's your seal. There's your old dead seal. That guy, even, even where I, I wasn't picking at it with the, the seal puller, you can see it's got some pretty significant wear. It's got dirt and grime all over it. So he's toast. Now you have the collar right in here um, and your rear bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and, and get that uh, rear bearing out of there. But before we do, there is actually a part in here that we need to get to. There's a snap ring. 
clean this up a little bit. You can see the snap ring right here. So we're gonna need to pop that snap ring off. We get in here with my snap ring pliers. These are nice because you can unthread this little screw and uh, there's a, a various a different group of heads in here in the kit. Um, this craft work set. I've had these uh, probably 20 years. So you have angled heads and straight heads, different sizes, uh, different strengths. But you can change the configuration. You can, if you undo the screw, you can switch them over. And so you can see right now they're, they're naturally open. If you uh, take the screw out, switch the same head over onto this set of pins, it'll be naturally closed. But since we have an open snap ring and we want to pull it out, we're gonna start with the open setting here. Get it in on our pins. Again, these are some pretty hefty pins. There's some pretty, uh, a pretty hefty snap ring. So don't use super L cheapos here guys, because they will fail on you and they will hurt. Okay, so this snap ring is super tight. Uh, so it took me a little while to get it out, but once I did, I, I know I said don't use a screwdriver. I mean, like don't get in there and try and pry it out with a screwdriver. So I used my snap ring pliers and I tightened the snap ring and then I got behind it just to lever it out and I got it outside the ring. So now you can work it out just the rest of the way. Bingo bongo, it's out. Now you see there the inner bearing, uh, the rear bearing. So we should be able to tap it out. Um, we've got to get the front bearing out and then we can get our, our rear bearing out. So we're back to the front. Uh, now that we've got the snap ring off the back, we're gonna actually uh, pound that old bearing out of the back. So what I use is an 18 millimeter socket on an extension, and then you should be able to just, there's the, the collar in here we talked about. We should be able to tap it out. And there it goes, pushes right out. And our rear bearing came right out the back. And you roll it around doesn't feel too bad, but there are some catches in there that I can feel. So luckily we're gonna replace this guy too. Now, we push our collar straight through, spacer. There he is, nice and goopy. Cover a lot of old grease. Set him aside. And now we can come back from the back side with a larger socket and tap this one out. So I go in, it's a 36 millimeter socket. It's just used as a spacer. It's on a on an extension. We'll see what it takes to tap this guy out. You can see it already working its way out. What you don't want to do is damage the races or the landing surfaces. Boom. It's out and pull our spacer back out. Look at <laughs> added bonus. We get a lot of grease comes out with it. So here's our front bearing. Again, you want to roll it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's chunky. And it's almost so chunky it wants to do the truffle shuffle. All right, so now there we have our our hole. You can get right in there, take a look in there. You can see there's a lot of old grease, a lot of old uh, material in there, but we can, we can clean that out. You wanna get as much of that old grease out of there as possible before we start putting the new material in. All right, so now we have all the parts out. Uh, we have our inner and outer bearings out. We have the central carrier out. Um, and I kind of went in there and wiped as much of the grease out as possible, or the old grease. And so now we're gonna go back for reassembly. We have our, our new bearings. We have our, uh, our circle clip that goes on the inside here. And we have our race uh, that goes in between the inner and outer bearings. Um, it's been a couple days since I tore it apart. I had to run out and take care of some stuff. So with any dust that's accumulated, I don't want to transfer the dust into the inside of the car. So I'm just going to take a, a shop rag and wipe this guy out. So you still had some dirt and debris on it. And now you want to apply a liberal amount of bearing grease to this uh, because this is going to be a, a carrier surface. So apply a good amount of bearing grease to the outside and the inside and we're gonna slide that back in through the the IRS housing. Uh, this is going to be a messy process folks so please make sure that you're wearing gloves and some older clothes. Um, it's one of those things where 
I, you'd rather have too much grease than too, too little. All right, so it looks like peanut butter. Slathered it on there really well. I'm gonna slide, uh, slide that in. Actually, I'm gonna slide that one in here. Um, get it in there in the middle. And just wipe off the excess grease. And then we we have get fingers a little cleaner. And we're gonna work on our bearings. Now there's two ways to pack bearings. Um, the bearings come unpacked, with, which means you don't have any grease on them. Um, and you definitely have to pack them full of grease. So they come fresh and clean, but with no grease in them. So you can, what you can do is you can get a, a, a palm full of grease and you can sit there and, you know, grind the grease into the bearing. The other option is you get a bearing packer. I picked this guy up off of Amazon. Um, and it's pretty nice because then you, all you do is pull your, pull your press out and separate the top from the bottom like that set your bearing in the middle tighten it back down and then press it into your grease good angle and what it does is as you press it down it presses the grease right into the bearing itself get a little pressure on it you can see it's pressing the grease right up through the packing of the bearing all right, you lift it out. And now your bearing is packed full of grease, okay? Um, I'm gonna set this one into the rear. What we can do is we can use an oversized socket. Um, I'm gonna to try to find one of my larger sockets because you, you can tap that race in there and, and you can tap that bearing in there, but you don't wanna go on the inner bearing surface. So I'll show you on the other bearing. When you tap it into place, you definitely don't wanna go on the inner race of the bearing or against the bowls of the bearing because you take a good chance of messing up the bearing itself. So when you tap it in, you want to tap on that outer race to, to push it in. You don't want to hit on the center race, and you don't want to push against the, the balls of the bearing. You can get a, a bearing driver, which is basically a plate, and it presses up against it. Um, but we're going to work on, on tapping this guy in with a socket. All right, once you get it seated, you want to seat it in until you can see that ring down in there. Um, that ring is where your clip is going to go. And we'll get our, our clip back in and get it inside that ridge. There we go. Back to tell them right, it's, it's fully in the groove in the main part of, of the bearing race, but it's not set into its groove yet. Just going to lightly tap it around, click. And now we can see it's completely in there. It's seated. All right. Our rear bearings in, we've got our, our uh, center carrier in here, uh, but you can see there's a lot of space. So we're just gonna pack in a lot of grease in and around that. We're just gonna get a bunch of it in there. Um, right now, I'm not, I don't really care if I have too much, even if I get it in the center of that carrier, uh, because as, when, when we insert our, our spline shaft, it'll push out any, anything that doesn't need to be in there, but I wanna make sure that I have an, more than enough grease in there so that this doesn't get uh, hot and it doesn't get stuck at a later point because um, it, it, it needs to be able to, to spin, it needs to be able to move in there. And pack a bunch of grease in there. This is not the job you do wearing your Sunday best. Get it in there, pack it in there. All right, with our second bearing packed, we're gonna take it, we're gonna set it in and it sets shallow. So it just sets tight against that face. I do have, um, I have this socket, which isn't actually a socket. It's actually from a, a ball joint tool. I do like to use that 
as it fits over the face all the way around. All right, we have our seals. There's our inner seal. We'll just take it, we're gonna set it back in here. And then using our rubber mallet, we're just gonna lightly tap it into place. You to be gentle with it. You don't need to hit it hard or anything. Just tappy tap. Tap it in. All right. Then we take our stub axle. Don't forget, there's a couple of these collars on here. Uh, this collar, sometimes it'll stay on there. Sometimes it'll kind of get caught on those teeth. Um, this one has, let's see if I can inch it off here. It has a, a concave bit on the bottom and it matches the ridge right on that. All right, take our stub shaft. We're gonna gently push it through. Uh, remember you've got that center carrier in there. Uh, this has to go through that carrier and you got a ton of grease in there. Oh, there it goes and start sliding through. Get a lot of our bulk excess grease, put it back in your jar, save it for the other side. You need it. Try to keep your hands clean because you're going to get grease everywhere if you don't. You'll go through some shop towels here, all right? But this, it'll go a long way if you try to keep it a little cleaner. Then take your rubber mallet, just tap that guy home. Yep, finish tapping it through. And it's seat. You want it to seat right up against the back there. Oh, and that does feel a ton better already. With your kit, you're gonna take your O-ring, slip it around the outside, and get that set right in place. And you have your uh, cap. You know, set your other um, your other seal right in into the cap. All right, and it sets in sets in from the top. Set it in and then lightly tap it in. Again, with a rubber mallet, you don't need to be heavy. Just be gentle with it. Take our cover and we're gonna slide it in here. Now be careful not to hurt your seal or anything. Nick your seal as you're getting it over this cover. As you're getting it on there. Okay. So now then you're gonna reinsert your bolts and tighten everything up. All right, on our cover, um, see how there's some indentations on either side, those go down. Um, so now everything is in there and we're gonna go in and just start tightening our, our cover bolts back into place. All right, kind of got around and just make sure they're tight. You don't need to go with too many ogadogas here. Going by hand, so there's just so the ooga doogas. I like your old Captain Caveman and Unga Boongas. Unga Booga. All right, there we go. Not too much force. All right, now, so that all of this grease doesn't end up in your brakes, go ahead and wipe this off. As you bolt your brake stuff on, it'll really make sure this this pulls tight. But you can just go ahead with your old bearing right over the top. Just make make sure that center carrier stays properly seated back in there. You're probably gonna get some grease to push out around that because if you pack that guy nice and tight, you're gonna get some resistance. All right, and our seal is in there. You can see it just wants to push out a little bit because it's oozing some grease around the outside. That means we've packed it in really well. All right, everything's back together. Our stub axle is in. Uh, and just so we don't lose any parts, the kit that we got comes with uh, a new, nice new cotter pin and we don't want to lo lose our castle nut. So for right now, I'm just going to slide our cotter pin through so we don't lose it and just run our castle nut down over the top a little bit so we don't lose that as well. But now we have a new bearing set on the driver side rear of this 1971. All right, with that in mind, uh, that wraps up another week of going through this, uh, a little short and sweet. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you out. When we get back next week, we're putting the disc brakes onto the rear of this car. This side, we're gonna throw the disc brakes on there and we're gonna be ready to rock and roll. 
I can't wait to see it with the discs on here. I'm hoping to pick up my wheels on Friday um, and get the wheels and tires matched up so that we can get this rolling. Uh, it, it's been it's been a long time since this has been on the ground. Uh, it's been on, on the stand or it's been uh, on jack stands or elsewhere since at least last fall. Um, it's been a lot of hard work and I appreciate you guys sticking with me. So hang around some more, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Let me know if you have any questions along the way or if there's anything in particular you'd like to see. I'm going to keep working on this. You guys have a great night. I'll see you next time. Bye.